Hi, everyone. My name is Leo, and today we're going to delve into a chilling case that shook the core of our community. On September 22, 2023, the remains of Suzanne Morph were unearthed three long years after her abrupt vanishing on May 10, 2020. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation stumbled upon her remains during an unrelated search operation in Moffat Saga County, breathing unexpected life into the once cold case of Suzanne Morph's disappearance. Initially, suspicion swirled around her husband, given their tumultuous personal life and the hazy recollection of events surrounding her disappearance. The authorities believed they had their man, a husband painted as the likely perpetrator of what they presumed to be a murder. Yet, as time passed, new evidence emerged, casting doubt on their certainty. Over the course of two grueling years, more than 70 investigators poured over the case, investing a staggering 1,000 hours of painstaking work. They executed 135 search warrants and interviewed over 400 individuals. Despite the exhaustive effort, the charges against Barry Morphew were eventually dropped due to insufficient evidence and glaring mismanagement. However, lingering doubt lingered in the minds of many. The discovery of Suzanne's remains, positioned 50 miles beyond the initial search area, and the subsequent DNA evidence linking her demise to a suspected serial killer, have ignited a firestorm of questions. What truly transpired on that fateful day? Is Barry Morphew a master manipulator, evading justice at every turn, or is there a darker, more sinister force at play within Suzanne's inner circle? Suzanne Morph, born on April 11, 1971, was more than just a name. She was the beloved daughter of Jean and Adrian Alexandria, and a cherished sister to David and Andrew. Described by those who knew her as an exceptional intellect and a compassionate friend, Suzanne's life took a tragic turn. In 1998, while still in high school, Suzanne crossed paths with her future husband, Barry Morphew. Their whirlwind romance culminated in marriage after six years of courtship. Barry, once a promising baseball prodigy signed with the Toronto Blue Jays, saw his dreams dashed by a career-ending injury. He pivoted to horticulture, building a landscape empire from the ground up. Meanwhile, Suzanne pursued her passion for education, teaching for four years before fate dealt her a cruel hand in the form of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Defying the odds, Suzanne battled cancer twice, and in 2018, the Morphews embarked on a new chapter in Mayville, Colorado. A picturesque life awaited them, nestled on a sprawling seven-acre property where Barry could indulge his passion for hunting. Their idyllic existence was shattered by Suzanne's inexplicable disappearance, leaving behind two daughters, Mallory and Macy, and a community grappling with unanswered questions. As we untangle the web of intrigue surrounding Suzanne's fate, one question remains hauntingly unanswered. Was her demise the result of calculated malice or a tragic twist of fate? The tale of the Morphu family paints a picture of suburban tranquility intertwined with unseen complexities. Barry, the industrious contractor, juggled multiple roles from volunteer firefighter to devoted family man. Meanwhile, Suzanne, having bid adieu to her teaching career, immersed herself in church activities and newfound hobbies like mountain biking, from the outside, the Morphus appeared the epitome of familial bliss, but beneath the surface lurked shadows of strife waiting to emerge. These shadows would soon cast their pall over the events of May 10th, 2020, a Mother's Day unlike any other. The day dawned with a departure from tradition at the Morphew household. 
Barry and the girls embarked on separate journeys, leaving Suzanne alone in their abode. Barry cited a landscaping appointment in Broomfield, a three-hour drive from Mayville, while the girls set off on a camping escapade. Anticipation hung in the air as the family anticipated their reunion later that evening to celebrate Mother's Day. Yet, as the hours waned and the sun dipped below the horizon, celebration gave way to concern. Suzanne's absence from the digital realm, a stark deviation from her norm, raised alarm bells. In a bid to assuage their growing unease, Mallory and Macy reached out to their neighbor, Martin Ritter, seeking solace in his familiar presence. Mrs. Ritter ventured to the Morphew residence, only to be met with an eerie emptiness. A call to Barry, the patriarch, yielded little comfort. His instruction to check for Suzanne's mountain bike hinted at the ominous turn events would soon take. With mounting dread, Mrs. Ritter dialed the authorities, setting in motion a chain of events that would unravel the mystery shrouding Suzanne's disappearance. As the police descended upon the Morphew home, anxiety gnawed at Barry and his daughters. Hope flickered amidst the darkness when the deputies stumbled upon a crucial clue, a solitary mountain bike perched precariously near a ravine. The absence of telltale signs of struggle perplexed investigators. No skid marks marred the earth, no blood tainted the scene, and the bike itself bore no scars from its tumble down the ravine. It was a puzzle with too many missing pieces, leaving Barry and the authorities grasping at straws for answers. Barry's peculiar behavior and his penchant for weaving elaborate tales plunged investigators into a labyrinth of uncertainty. His outlandish mountain lion theory, shared in a clandestine conversation with YouTuber Tyson Draper, served as a mere prelude to a series of bizarre narratives that would confound those seeking answers. Amidst mounting suspicions, Barry's absence from search efforts organized by Suzanne's brother, Andrew, only fueled speculation. Andrew harbored doubts about Barry's alibi, suggesting Suzanne may have vanished on May 9th rather than Mother's Day. The discovery of Suzanne's helmet, positioned a mile from the Morphew residence in the precise direction indicated by Barry's truck telemetry, ignited a blaze of suspicion. This revelation, coupled with Barry's contradictory statements, cast a shadow of doubt over his purported innocence. Barry's initial account, claiming an early morning departure for a landscaping assignment in Broomfield, crumbled under scrutiny. Telematic data revealed a detour westward, contradicting his narrative. When confronted, Barry spun a tale of elk scouting, a flimsy excuse unraveling under the weight of logic. Further interrogation unearthed a web of deceit, exposing Barry's fabrications regarding the events leading up to Suzanne's disappearance. His recollection of a blissful day with Suzanne, punctuated by a hike and an intimate evening, clashed with reality. As investigators delved deeper, discrepancies emerged, painting a damning portrait of Barry's deceit phone records, and vehicle telemetry unveiled a stark truth. Barry's version of events crumbled under scrutiny. May 9th, 2020, bore witness to a facade of marital harmony shattered by deception. The unraveling of Barry's intricate web of lies marked a pivotal moment in the investigation, a stark reminder of the darkness lurking beneath the veneer of suburban tranquility. With each revelation, the shadow of suspicion loomed larger, obscuring the truth and leaving a community grasping for answers. As the investigation delved deeper into the events of May 10th, discrepancies emerged, shattering Barry's carefully constructed facade of innocence. Phone data revealed a series of erratic movements around the Morphew property, contradicting Barry's claims of a mundane day. 
at 2.47 p.m., Barry inexplicably switched his phone to airplane mode, a move veiled in suspicion. Even the supposed shared steak dinner with Suzanne was cast into doubt when investigators uncovered only one dirty dish rather than the expected two. As night fell, the shadows of suspicion lengthened, casting a pall over the Morphew property. Surveillance footage captured Barry's car reversing at 9.30 p.m., a sinister maneuver suggesting the clandestine disposal of evidence. From 3.25 to 3.48 a.m., the records painted a damning picture of clandestine activity. Barry's truck door opened and closed over 80 times, a flurry of secretive movements hinting at a darker truth concealed from prying eyes. Interviews with co-workers shattered Barry's alibi, revealing he had no legitimate reason to be in Broomfield that day. Surveillance footage contradicted his account, capturing him disposing of trash bags near McDonald's and the Holiday Inn. Barry's feeble attempts at explanation crumbled under scrutiny. His excuse of wanting to avoid disposal fees rang hollow in the face of mounting evidence. Reports of a strong smell of bleach and chlorine in his hotel room raised further suspicions. As the layers of deception peeled away, a chilling portrait of marital discord emerged. Text messages recovered from Suzanne's phone revealed a marriage marred by turmoil. Notes detailing instances of physical abuse painted a harrowing picture of Suzanne's suffering. The facade of marital bliss crumbled, revealing a fractured union plagued by secrets and strife. As the investigation plunged deeper into the heart of darkness, one question echoed. What unspeakable horrors lay buried beneath the veneer of suburban tranquility? The harrowing saga of Suzanne Morphew's disappearance unraveled further, unveiling a tangled web of deceit and betrayal. Alone in her torment, Suzanne grappled with the specter of her husband's demons, a marriage marred by alcoholism, jealousy, and infidelity. Her fears materialized in the form of a pen, a weapon wielded not to catch her husband in the act, but to document her own transgressions. The ink etched a damning narrative of Suzanne's affair with Jeff, a ghost from her past. Though Jeff seemed a likely suspect, the police cleared him of any involvement, leaving the true perpetrator lurking in the shadows. Barry's discovery of Suzanne's infidelity, confirmed by a note penned in desperation, lent credence to investigators' suspicions. The tranquilizer dart cap nestled in the family's dryer, the spent bullet casing, the shattered doorframe, all whispered of a violent confrontation, a tempest unleashed behind closed doors. In a cruel twist of fate, Suzanne's own journal, reduced to ashes in the fireplace, bore silent witness to her suffering. Each clue, each fragment of evidence, wove a chilling tapestry of deceit, pointing accusing fingers at the one person sworn to protect her. The phone data, a digital testament to Suzanne's final moments, painted a haunting portrait of despair. Text messages sent in desperation, a final selfie captured in anguish before silence descended like a shroud. Yet the public remained oblivious to Barry's dark secret until two weeks later, when the excavation of a construction site cast a spotlight on his guilt. In a desperate bid to salvage his tarnished reputation, Barry released a bizarre video proclaiming his innocence, a hollow echo in the face of mounting evidence. Barry's arrest on May 5, 2021, marked the culmination of a year-long investigation. But the journey was far from over. The prosecution, 
armed with circumstantial evidence and a mountain of lies, pressed forward, confident in their pursuit of justice, charged with first-degree murder, tampering with evidence, and a litany of other offenses, Barry's descent into infamy seemed inexorable. Even his foray into voter fraud, a misguided attempt to curry favor, only served to further tarnish his legacy. As the case hurtled toward trial, the courtroom became a stage for the unfolding drama. Each revelation, a dagger plunged into the heart of a community reeling from betrayal. In the crucible of justice, the truth would finally emerge, casting aside the shadows of doubt and laying bare the darkest recesses of the human soul. In the dim confines of her marital prison, Suzanne Morphew grappled with shadows of doubt and despair. Her fears, whispered in hushed tones, painted a portrait of a marriage teetering on the brink of collapse. Barry's descent into alcohol-fueled rages, his relentless pursuit of her phone, a lifeline to the outside world, cast a pall over their once idyllic union. As the authorities stormed the Morphew residence on that fateful day in May, their search unearthed a damning artifact, a pen purchased in a desperate bid to ensnare her husband in his deceit. Yet, irony dripped from the ink, for it was Suzanne's own affair that stained its pages, a secret liaison with Jeff, a specter from her past. Though Jeff loomed as a likely suspect, the police exonerated him, leaving a lingering question hanging in the air. How had Barry unearthed Suzanne's darkest secret? A note penned in desperation, mere days before her vanishing, hinted at a confrontation brewing beneath the surface, a storm of jealousy and suspicion unleashed. The spy pen, a silent witness to Suzanne's clandestine rendezvous, was but one thread in the tapestry of betrayal. A tranquilizer dart cap, a spent bullet casing, and the shattered remnants of a doorframe spoke volumes of violence lurking in the shadows. Amidst the debris of shattered dreams, the telematic data whispered a chilling truth. Barry's meticulously orchestrated facade was unraveling. Suzanne's final moments, captured in a flurry of text messages and a haunting selfie, painted a portrait of a woman on the brink of oblivion. Yet the public remained oblivious to Barry's sinister machinations until the excavation of a construction site cast a harsh spotlight on his guilt. In a last-ditch effort to salvage his crumbling facade, Barry released a surreal video proclaiming his innocence, a desperate plea, drowning in a sea of damning evidence. Barry's arrest marked the culmination of a year-long investigation, yet the journey had only just begun. Charged with a litany of offenses, from first-degree murder to election fraud, Barry's fate hung in the balance as the wheels of justice ground inexorably forward. As the preliminary hearing loomed, the courtroom became a theater of the absurd. Each revelation, a dagger plunged into the heart of a community reeling from betrayal. In the crucible of justice, the truth would finally emerge, tearing aside the veil of deceit and laying bare the darkest recesses of the human soul. The prosecution, armed with a narrative woven from threads of circumstantial evidence, painted a chilling picture of Barry Morphew's alleged crime. According to their theory, Barry had orchestrated his wife's demise on May 9, 2020, dismembering her body in a hotel room before burying her in an unmarked grave. Yet Barry's defense launched a vigorous counterattack, casting doubt on the prosecution's tale. Cadaver dogs, they argued, failed to uncover any trace of human remains in Barry's car or the hotel room implicated in the alleged crime. 
they questioned the integrity of the evidence, suggesting the possibility of tampering, pointing to visual inconsistencies in photographs of the dryer, and casting doubt on the origins of the dart bullet cover. Crucially, the defense seized upon a revelation that sent shockwaves through the courtroom, the discovery of partial DNA on Suzanne's Range Rover and bike helmet, none of which matched Barry. This revelation was compounded by the revelation that the DNA bore striking similarities to samples from unsolved sexual assault cases in Chicago and Arizona, raising troubling questions about a potential alternate suspect. The defense's case was bolstered by allegations of prosecutorial misconduct. They argued that the prosecution had withheld crucial evidence, including the existence of foreign DNA matches from the defense, a violation of Barry's rights. This revelation, coupled with missed deadlines and sanctions against the prosecution, cast a shadow of doubt over the integrity of the case. As the courtroom drama unfolded, the judge faced a weighty decision. Despite the prosecution's insistence on moving forward, he delayed his ruling, citing the complexity of the case and the resources invested. When the decision finally came on September 7, 2021, Barry walked free on bail. His smile, a stark contrast to the gravity of the charges he faced. In a stunning turn of events, the prosecution moved to dismiss all charges against Barry without prejudice, citing the lack of a body and the specter of prosecutorial misconduct. The decision sent shockwaves through the world, leaving many questioning the integrity of the justice system and the true nature of justice itself. The discovery of Suzanne Morgan's remains on September 22nd, 2023, sent shockwaves rippling through Moffitt, Colorado, and reignited speculation surrounding her tragic demise. Identified through dental records and a chemotherapy port, her body was found over 50 miles away from the initial search area, shrouded in the desolate beauty of Moffitt's landscape. With Suzanne's remains unearthed, questions swirled anew around Barry's potential involvement in her death. While evidence suggests his truck was not in Moffitt on the fateful days of May 9th and 10th, some have posited the theory of accomplices aiding in the disposal of Suzanne's body. The specter of lingering doubt looms large, prompting speculation about potential links between Barry and Moffat that have yet to be uncovered. Amidst the uncertainty, Barry appears to have emerged from the shadows of suspicion, at least for the time being. However, the wheels of justice continue to turn, with law enforcement and the district attorney's office maintaining a vigilant watch over the case. The district attorney of the 12th Judicial District remained tight-lipped, citing ongoing investigations, while extending heartfelt condolences to Suzanne's grieving family. In a bold move, Barry's attorney, Iris E.T. Yan, seized upon the discovery of Suzanne's remains to cast doubt on Barry's culpability, hinting at the possibility of a serial killer working in the shadows. With Suzanne's body found in what can only be described as a boneyard, Jan's assertions challenged the narrative of Barry's guilt, painting him as a victim of law enforcement's misguided pursuit. As the legal battle rages on, Barry has taken matters into his own hands, launching a $15 million lawsuit against prosecutors, sheriff stations, and investigators alike. In a defiant stance, he seeks vindication for what he perceives as wrongful charges and a campaign of persecution that has torn his life asunder. In the swirling vortex of accusations, doubts, and unanswered questions, the truth remains elusive, a tantalizing specter on the horizon, beckoning to be unveiled from the depths of darkness.
Until then, the fate of Suzanne Morphew and the shadow that looms over Barry's name will continue to haunt the collective consciousness, a testament to the enduring mysteries of human nature and the inexorable march of justice.